Hello everyone, Victor is here, your guide to all things organic chemistry, and today I want to look at this fun oxidation reaction. So as we know, PCC is one of those awesome oxidizing reagents that's going to take an alcohol and oxidize it to either corresponding aldehyde in the case of the primary alcohol or to a ketone in the case of the secondary alcohol. Well, in this case we have something rather odd going on. We have a primary alcohol over here and we also have primary alcohol over here. Yet, for the final product we are not seeing two aldehydes Rather, we see the formation of an ester. So what exactly is going on here? Well, let's look at the mechanism of this reaction and try to figure out what's going on there. So first of all, I'm going to start here by drawing my reagents. So I have my alcohol on the left side and I also have PCC right over here, which stands for pyridinium chlorochromate. So we have our pyridinium part that is over here, and we have our chlorochromate, which is going to be our actual oxidizing agent in this case. So the oxidation reaction here starts by taking the electrons from the OH, which is going to acting as a nucleophile, and attacking our chromium like this, knocking the chlorine out. This is going to give us a protonated intermediate, and we're not particularly happy about that, so we're going to lose this proton over here to any kind of conjugate base that we have floating around. It can be an equivalent of pyridine, or maybe Cl-, or even another equivalent of the chlorochromate itself. Doesn't matter. For the simplicity's sake, I'm just going to abbreviate that as Cb over here that stands for the conjugate base. So that conjugate base is going to come in and pull that proton off, giving me the corresponding intermediate here. Now, the next fun part that we are going to have here is where the oxidation actually happens. So we are going to take the hydrogen that is sitting on the same atom where my oxygen is, the one that is sitting with the chromium right now, and again, I'm going to use whatever conjugate base I have floating around, come in, pull that proton off, doing the cascade of the electrons like this, and that is our actual redox step, where the carbon is going to get oxidized and chromium is going to get reduced, and that's going to give us the corresponding aldehyde intermediate. Now, those of you who are in the second semester of organic chemistry, or maybe you like to read ahead, you probably know already about the uh, aldehydes and ketones and their reactivity in general. So when it comes to aldehydes, they are incredibly electrophilic, and when we have an aldehyde and an OH group inside of the same molecule, they are going to go into a very quick equilibrium between the open chain and the cyclic form. Just like in the case of a glucose, for instance, where I have this aldehyde over here and I have an OH group, the glucose exists in a very quick equilibrium between the open chain form and a cyclic form, which we call glucopyranose. And interestingly enough, in this equilibrium, the cyclic form is actually favored. We also can call this cyclic form a lactol, which is just going to be a chemical name for a cyclic hemiacetal, and we don't have to stick to glucopyranose because it is, you know, only pyranose when it comes to the carbohydrates. So when it comes to the this type of a cyclic structure, that cyclic structure is going to be favored at equilibrium. So going back to our reaction over here, our aldehyde here can also exist in the form of the open chain that I have on the screen, or in the cyclic form, like what I have here in the form of this lactal. If I number my atoms for the clarity's sake, we are going to have atoms 1, 2, 3, four, and I will also number my oxygen as my number five, all these same atoms are found in my cyclic structure. They are one, two, three, four, and oxygen is going to be my number five here. So just like in the case of the carbohydrates, where the cyclic form is more favorable in equilibrium, here we have the same deal, where the aldehyde is not as favored in equilibrium as the cyclic form. So as soon as we form this aldehyde, the intramolecular reaction, the cyclization is going to happen, giving us that lactol. And here is the fun part though. We have just reformed the OH over here, which can then undergo the second round of the oxidation. 
radiation, giving us our cyclic ester, which is called gamma butyrolactone, and that is going to be our final product. So remember, whenever you are dealing with reactions where you have two functional groups that can easily react with each other inside of the molecule, the intramolecular reaction typically going to happen way faster than anything else, so always mind those first. If you can do the intramolecular reaction, do that and then continue with your mechanism. This type of phenomenon, when the intramolecular reaction happens before anything else, can happen even within the mechanism itself, just like what we are seeing in this case. So always keep those in mind when working on your mechanisms especially when your molecule has multiple functional groups and all of them can participate in different types of chemistry in the same conditions. So what did you think about this mechanism? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this tutorial and learn something new, boop that like button to help promote it and help more students see it. And as always, thank you for watching till the very end and especially thanks to all Organic Chemistry Tutor members for your support and constant encouragement. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates, watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.